Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial in the Smile Game Builder tutorial series. Today's focus is a more in-depth view of characters and party members. Now before I proceed, something very strange is going on. The video was scheduled for upload yesterday, Sunday, but post-production it went all pear-shaped. Again, this makes it the third time where something has happened to prevent a Sunday upload. On Mondays, however, it seems to go really smoothly. Maybe the tutorial gods are trying to tell me something, huh? So from now on, Sundays will be the creation day, and Mondays will be the production day. I'd like to try and keep videos in between 15 and 20 minutes in length, so I may end up splitting this one into several parts. Let me know in the comments if you'd like or prefer to see longer videos. Now I was planning on continuing with doors and transfers but decided not to. And talking of which, I forgot to mention something about them in the previous tutorial. Because doors in SGB, notably the presets, rely heavily on teleporting from one area to another, it means that you can't just simply place an animated door leading to another room in the same location. The result is usually that the door will open, but you'll often find that you won't be able to pass through properly. Let's click on the house map. And while we're at it, we can also set up the starting position. Right click, make this the start point there. Now the workaround for our door problem is quite simple, but it isn't perfect. Create a door as normal. Like so. And then in the advanced editing, delete everything except for the blue and both greens. like so. Next change the second event graphic motion to close. Oh and make sure that the collide with player is unchecked as well. This disables the collision and enables pass through. Rotate the door so it fits snugly. Voila. Um, Let's play test this to s so you can see what I mean. <clears throat> so now going through the door results in it opening for the player to go through and it closes behind them and no teleport and the same way for walking through from the other side. Now one of the downfalls with this method is that characters can ghost through the door like so if they don't go all the way into the room. Most players generally tend to venture further into the rooms, right? And then do some exploration. So perhaps this can be forgiven. There is a way around this, but I won't go into detail in this tutorial. Now as a side note, the very first thing I did in the early beta build of SGB was create a door from scratch and using no presets. The results were humorous to say the least. Why don't you see for yourself what I mean? This still makes me chuckle even now just thinking about it. It demonstrates how not to create a door in SGB. I'll assume that you've watched the previous video in the series. If you haven't, I'd recommend you do so before viewing this one, as the maps and content I create in them will be used across these tutorials. Let's populate our map with some characters. I added a few things to decorate the house, table, stools, beds, and some more furniture. 
let's also make it harder for players to recruit party members rather than just um, talking to them and having them join we'll set it up where each party member requires an item or condition before they'll actually join you'll then go have to go and find these items first I need to check their names I'm using the defaults in for this tutorial Sean or Sion Marie Ignaz Lisa Eldred okay <clears throat> back to our setup most people rifle through chests and cupboards in RPGs right I mean you can usually just enter people's houses open up all their cupboards and chests or search through their belongings and take take the items or treasure you find unchallenged so in keeping with this trope let's select the dresser and choose dresser message um, so we'll start with there's a note in the bottom drawer like so Incidentally, the message window is limited to three lines before it clears with a key press and displays the next three lines when in the message. Unlike RPG Maker, where you have to check batch entry for multiple message windows, SGB doesn't need that. It'll automatically add them every three lines. That means that you can technically have an unlimited amount of lines, and every three lines that it encounters, it will automatically create a new window so let's have Marie like flowers um, Ignaz being the mercenary warrior type favors money Lisa fancies some eggs and Eldred um, well nobody knows what he wants so we'll put the double question mark there for now now that we've determined the items we'll use we we'll need to set them up edit game data items add two more then give them the names um, egg and flower and change their icons like so. This custom icon set is one that I created just for the tutorial. The icons are 32 by 32, by the way. Now, on to the party members. We'll mostly be using preset events, which we'll then modify, but we'll also probably create some events from scratch. The first one in the list is Marie, who likes flowers. So stationery, and then different conversation when you have an item. We'll place her on the chair. The item she requires is the flower. We change her graphics. I believe <coughs> it would be heroin two, heroin two. Okay. And no, that's not the right one. It'll be that one. Then we'll have her happy because she's a happy go lucky wild child type thing. And no bug, it doesn't update here. So when you do not have the item, she will say something um, roses are red, violets are blue, in keeping with the fact that Mary likes. Marie likes flowers. 
um, when I have a rose, I'll join you. I know it's a very bad little ditty, but it serves our purposes for the tutorial. And then when you do have the item, um, you found a rose. Not just any rose, this is a rare mountain rose. And in the advanced editing, you'll see you have two event sheets, one for if you don't have the rose, the other for if you do. Each event sheet also has conditions which will trigger if they're true. On the first sheet we'll need to add a condition to check that she is not in the party. Otherwise, this will loop where she recites our not-so-good ditty without relenting. On the second sheet, the condition has already been set up for possession of the flower. We need to add another condition, checking to see if she's not in the party again. And then add an event where she will join. It's actually under stats and items, which is a bit odd. You'd expect it to be under like player movements or condition checks or something. So add her to the party. And then um, add an event where she takes away the rose. For flower, number one, subtract. And then back to the back to the start map. Now, um, the sparkly thing we set up in the previous tutorial is where we'll add the item when this deigns to load. like so. It's right here. Um, edit, so we will add the flower. Next, we'll have to set up two stairs functions at the top and bottom of the ladder. So, yeah, that's right. Stairs and functions, which leads to the top. Similarly, another one that leads to the bottom. This is actually just a quick cheat to go up and down the ladder, but in a later tutorial I'll show how you can move up and down ladders more realistically. So let's do a quick play test. Okay, whoa, of course, we completely forgot something. Marie is floating. I guess she is a magician after all. So we need to go back into the house. Um, we'll have to tweak her settings slightly. Now in the graphics here, we set her motion This is another bug. 
there should actually be a whole heap of um, options here but it doesn't so that's a real bummer um, it means it means um, I, I don't know sometimes sometimes it's there sometimes it's not and I don't even know what is going on with that so let me see because when you change the graphic you have a whole lot more of um, options like including the chair so for the future just make sure that when you create the event um, that you get the right one this is something that Smileboom needs to address I think um, so I'll just I think um, I think I'll pause the video here and see what is actually going on well I'm back from that little escapade and honestly I have no clue why it did that because um, it should have the um, motions there. It seem it seems to me that it's uh, just one of those random bugs that happens every so often, where you cannot change the graphic from within the event itself, but you can set the graphic um, from from when you first create. Anyway, I recreated the uh, event exactly as we had done. <clears throat> Marie's not in the party, she displays that, and I have the item, and so on and so on. Now, another thing that we need to do is on both sheets, we need to ignore elevation. Otherwise, Marie will be rather rude and ignorant, and will just ignore you. Um, the ignore elevation is the equivalent to the events priority in RPG Maker. So now, if we play test again quickly, and we'll rotate her so she's facing the table. If we play test, it should, should, fingers crossed, run swimmingly. There she is, she sat at the table. And she says that not so good did he so we gotta go and find that rose so <clears throat> we go up the ladder get the item just to check there it is it's the flower down the ladder, back to Marie. Um, yeah, and um, the windows don't automatically rewrap, so you'll have to be aware of that too. So she joins the party, disappears, and there she is in the party. And at this point, I think I'll end the video and we'll continue with the characters and party members tutorial at the end of the week. As always, feel free to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and visit the RPG Maker Times blog. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.